Today let's talk a bit about shock states, which defines every state of your character where you cannot do anything except potentially use remove shock and that can also not be dispelled, so that does not englobe paralyze or fear for example. There are six types of shock states that are divided into two categories. The first one is the physical shock states, which include knockback, knockdown, ether hold, spin and draw. And the magical shock state, which is stun. Besides the draw state, which is the effect that Templars apply after pulling you and is commonly called pulled, uh, all shock states cause your remove shock to be available for use. Uh, whether you can use it depends on the CD. Whether you should then use it depends on the situation, as we'll see in just a moment. The physical shock states all have the same respective icon, whereas the magical one has a default one for PvE, but in PvP the skill that put you in this state is displayed. Um, for a shock state to be applied, the first requirement is for the skill to land. What that means is that the skill, regardless of whether it is physical or magical, must land. So if the skill is physical and you get dodged, no effect will be applied, and if the skill is magical and you get resisted, no effect will be applied either. And note that we are talking here about the skill and not the effect. So for example, Ether Hold of Sorcerers applies a physical shock state, but it's a magical skill, so it can be resisted, it cannot be dodged, and it works with magical accuracy versus magic resist. A physical shock state applied on a magical one will cause the magical one to be removed. A physical shock state applied on a physical shock state will have no effect at all. So, for example, if you try and put your target in ether hold while it's knocked down, this will fail 100%. You need to wait for your target not to be knocked down anymore before you can possibly cage it. A stun applied on a physical shock state will cause the target to be both stunned and in this physical state. And finally, a stun applied on another stun will cause the second one to replace the first one, or not. It actually depends on their respective level. So for example, ambush of assassin takes over pain rune of assassin. So if you ambush somebody who is stunned through pain rune, it will be replaced. But if you use pain rune on a target that has ambushed already, it will not be replaced and you'll have basically wasted your pain rune if not for the damage it dealt. A physical shock state has to deal at least one damage to the enemy for it to land. If it does not do any damage because of a blind or shield on the enemy for example, uh, the shock state has no chance to be applied. If the skill lands and does at least one damage, then there will be a test on the resistance to this state of your target versus the penetration to this state that you have. On the other hand, uh, stuns do not need to deal any damage to your enemy to have a chance to be applied. So if the skill lands, uh, there will be two extra checks. Uh, the first one is going to test your magical accuracy versus the magic resist of your target. And that regardless of whether the skill itself is physical or magical. That's quite similar to how the silence arrow of rangers work, for example. Um, if the first test passes, so if your magical accuracy versus the magic resist of your target is high enough, uh, then there is a test on your penetration to stun versus the resistance to stun of your target, quite similarly to physical shock states. So this gives a good edge for magic shock states over physical ones, and that's why it's sometimes good in PvP to keep one guy that can stun a lot, typically an assassin, to interrupt a dangerous target, regardless of the shields they may have, be it uh, bodyguard or spirit substitution, while others take care of another target. Stuns are magical, as we just saw, and the only way to protect yourself against them, if not to have stun resist, is to have magic resist gear. Uh, there are certain skills that increase your stun resistance, or your magic resist, but that's it really. If you don't have them, you can have to watch yourself suffer. On the other hand, uh, physical shock states do require to deal damage, as we've seen. So popping a shield right before you know that you're going to get pulled or caged typically uh, can prevent the effect activation. Uh, 
the damage will basically be absorbed by the shield, hence why no effect will be applied. So pay attention. If you're about to get caged or pulled and you know it for sure, you'll just learn with the situations. Uh, get an absorbing shield to try and prevent it, be it a skill from you or a group member or an anti-shock scroll. If you're about to cage or pull someone, make sure the enemy does not have any kind of 100% absorbing shield, otherwise there is no chance that the effect will be applied unless you break the shield on that attack. And do note that we're talking about a 100% shield here, so if it does not absorb all the damage, such as Safer Ward of Chantus for example, uh, your skill will still do damage, so there will be a chance of proccing the shock state, let aside obviously the shock resistance that the shield may have increased. As we've seen, all shock states but poor will pop remove shock, which may or may not be on CD. But one thing for sure, it's not because you're shocked that you need to use remove shock, so try and analyze the situation and think about the consequences of you staying shocked versus you re using remove shock. Um, if you're getting focus, for example, it can be good to use it. If you're a cleric and one of your teammates needs heals fast, it can be good to use it. Um, if you're in a burst phase and you need to sustain the damage on your target, it can be good to use it. Um, if you've got 1000 HP left in arena and you're about to die anyway, it's probably not worth using it as it will not help you and it will be on CD for the next minute. But those are just examples and there are tons of others, but hopefully you get a point here. Do not waste your remove shock if you or your teammate can afford to play without you for a couple of seconds. And don't waste it either if it's not going to help you anyway. Ultimately, if you can't or won't use remove shock, make sure to communicate so your teammates can use some complementary skills to make up for it in the meantime. That's all for shock states. I hope this may have cleared things up if there was a need for it. Uh, if you got any questions regarding this, feel free to contact me. Have fun, and till next time!